pre-testing in Bahrain is finally over, and if we've been able to learn one thing from it, it's that Mercedes has likely sandbagged throughout it, with the W14 not showing off the full potential it has. But why is this done in a situation where teams have only three days to prepare for the real thing that's about to happen on March 5th? Our Mercedes's performance is actually much better than what we've seen in Bahrain, which was mediocre to say the least. And are we going to have an Indigo replicated season starting in 2022? Keep an eye on this video to see what happens next for Mercedes and their sandbagging early in pre-testing. The 2022 season has shown that Mercedes hasn't got off on the right foot when it comes to the technical regulations. But now that the 2023 season is right upon us, we cannot help but wonder, did the Silver Arrows fix what needed to be fixed? Early statements about the W14 looking much better and different than the W13 in terms of design and performance raised our hopes. But now that we've seen that the W14's first true performance, we can't help but be disappointed. But still, this is Mercedes that we're talking about, and this is a team that has sandbagged throughout every preseason that they've completed, so it's not something that has surprised the fans that much. What has surprised us, however, is the fact that Mercedes are likely sandbagging in times when they're not fighting at the front of the grid. More precisely, they have finished as the third best team in 2022. From 2014 to 2021, Mercedes won eight consecutive Constructors' Championships and seven consecutive Drivers' Championships meaning that they could have done what they wanted to during the preseason, as there was no competition whatsoever. Even if some competitors emerged early in the season, Mercedes would have crushed their hopes by the end of the first season, and then go on to say that while the car wasn't looking at its best early in the season, we were able to improve it and win the championship with it. 2022 was the first time that Mercedes had no idea what was actually going on with their car, and they were looking to change that from 2023 onwards. Nonetheless, the pre-testing scheme has changed from the season on, and the teams had only three days to set up their car in the best possible setup before the first race in Bahrain. With that in mind, we've seen a very mediocre Mercedes, one that's most likely sandbagging throughout the pre-testing session, and one that most likely hides some performance behind Russell and Hamilton's hands. Before we get into Mercedes sandbagging and why the Brackley-based team has likely opted out of this narrative in pre-season testing, let us explain what sandbagging is and why Mercedes is so frequently associated with it. Sandbagging is when a Formula 1 team has its drivers go slower than expected during sessions in order to hide the real pace of the car. With this, the team is applying a common tactic in which they're deceiving the competitors, the media, and even the fans about the team's true power. If a team manages to go under the radar by hiding its performance, it helps deflect attention away from a particular part or concept of the car, because a team is able to understand where the other teams are in terms of pure pace and performance. Sandbagging is also used to create a false sense of security among competitors. And by initially underperforming, race day comes as a shock to everyone, like throwing a spanner in the works of their rivals. What ties Mercedes, a team that has won eight consecutive Constructors' Championships, to this strategy? Well, in 2019, the Silver Arrows have practically given up the championship to Ferrari in testing, only to win the first eight races of the season and show that they're the most dominant team on the grid. Throughout the first testing in Bahrain, we've been able to see a moderate performance from Hamilton and then later on from Russell. Hadn't the 2022 season turned out as it did, we would have talked about Mercedes yet again trying to play the underdog card and then take the league by storm. But with the Silver Arrows legitimately being hurt in the previous season, the fans and the media are very confused as to whether the team is sandbagging or if they are yet again going to struggle in the upcoming season. While Wolf and Shovlin were very happy with the pace that the W14 has displayed in Bahrain, with Russell reporting that there's no evident bouncing after 69 laps in the desert, it is not excluded that the porpoising issue will remain as it was in 2022. We've seen that Ferrari, more precisely Sainz, has had one of the most aggressively bouncing cars on the grid, and even though Ferrari were labelled as the porpoising geniuses back in 2022, it's not what you'd want to see early in the season. George Russell's car was implemented with a sensor located right above the steering wheel, and the experts believe that this sensor is used to measure the porpoising oscillations on the car. However, with Russell and Wolf reporting that the car feels great and isn't porpoising at all, one has to wonder, is Mercedes pushing their car to the limit or have they truly fixed the bouncing issue? Remember that the porpoising only triggers at high speeds, so if the car isn't being pushed to its maximum level, then it's likely that the phenomenon wouldn't be triggered at all. While the team is likely using the sandbagging tactic to put a mask on their car and try to get under the radar throughout the pre-testing, this could turn out to be a bad choice for Mercedes. For example, if the team doesn't push the car to its maximum performance, they will have no idea whether the porpoising and the bouncing will be triggered at high speeds, meaning that they will enter the first race in Bahrain with a huge headache. When talking about the pace of the W14 after Russell's 69 laps in the desert, Wolf added, He, Russell, was generally pleased with the car. It appears to be well balanced. 
There's no bouncing, which is good news apart from the big bump at the end of the straight. A good starting point. We're gathering a lot of data because that was important to correlate, obviously after last year and trying different things. So, a productive first morning. Furthermore, Wolf went on to say that at this point last year in Bahrain, the car was bouncing all over the place, and the team knew that they did something wrong with the new regulations and interpretations. When talking about it, he elaborated, We knew that we were in trouble because the car was just bouncing around, and we really weren't able to drive it correctly. I think we have a solid base now to work from and try to optimize the car, which we haven't done yet. It's really just finding out if there are any areas that could be a real performance hindrance, like last year with the bouncing, and now we've just got to work through the program. One thing that Mercedes needs to understand is that the results that Ferrari and Red Bull are showcasing are likely under the radar as well, or more precisely, a product of these two teams sandbagging the real performance of their 2023 challenges, just like Mercedes. Hamilton's peak was scored at 314 km an hour, with Sainz topping the sheet by an amazing 325 km an hour, as Verstappen split the duo by peaking at 320 km an hour at his personal maximum speed. However, one specific piece of data shows that Hamilton is very confident in the handling of the W14, and that is the throttle and brake handling. Hamilton stayed on the throttle at 100% a fraction longer and braked a fraction longer compared to Sainz and Verstappen, which could indicate a sign that Hamilton was definitely pushing more to the limit in the test compared to Sainz and Verstappen. Hamilton was also able to carry more speed through the corner, or more precisely turn one, with this pattern replicating throughout the rest of the first sector, as he was followed by Sainz and Verstappen. Hamilton's speed remained the fastest through turns 4, 8, 10, 11, 13 and 14, all of which are slow corners, implying that the W14 is a very quick car in this sector, which is important because cars spend more time in corners. Whether Mercedes has what it takes to win the championship yet again after the 2022 regulations miss, time will tell. But as of now, we do believe that the Silver Arrows are intentionally holding off on the true performance of the 2023 Challenger. After all, why wouldn't they? It's something that they've done in the past, and the most recent thing was speculated to be the engine failure in Silverstone, where the misfiring was rumored to be intentionally placed out there so that other teams would believe that the W14 has legitimate engine issues. Also during the second day of testing, George Russell had a technical issue with the car, and this is most likely a technical issue that the team is having. But you never know with Mercedes. Maybe they know exactly what they're doing. There is only a limited amount of time this year to test the car, and many people have said that the teams are pushing a little harder this year because we are only a few days away from the season officially starting. With Mercedes being one second behind their rival, do you think that this is all they have in the tank? Or do you think that they're purposely delaying the performance of the W14 and will try to take on the sport by storm later on in the season? Let us know in the comments below.